welcome back to the second half of the Bobby Dupre Show. And I might add that my sidekick, Andrew Guitros. Good morning. Uh, we had a good first half. We have to mm -hmm. run through it because we have a lot, lot of good things to talk about. You're only going to hear good things on the Bobby Dupre Show just like you have for the past 35 years on radio and past 10 years on television and about five or six years on the Internet now. Mm -hmm. So what How about a sponsor? Uh, That's a good thing the ones, to talk about. They're the ones that make it possible, the, the sponsors. This past week I had a nice gumbo over at your outdoor kitchen for our little retreat group that gets together at Grand Coteau. And if any of you interested in coming to the men's silent retreat, that's the evening of March 1st all the way through the noontime Sunday, March the 4th. So basically you miss one day of business Friday, come to the silent retreat, give me a call at 351-0732 and I can hook you up to get you to come with us to the retreat. But I had a little kickoff gumbo and I need some potato salad and some dessert and I called over at Benny's about 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon, I was running behind and I said, man, I was supposed to call early and I forgot, I need some help. And little Benny said, don't worry about it, I got it under control, I'll get you a potato salad. I said, what are we going to do for dessert? He says, how about king cakes? We're that season. So they made me a bunch of king cakes, potato salad. I got the drinks over there. I got most, most of the, 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 the stuff that went into gumbo all came from there as well. Benny Supermarket, go buy everything you want. They got it all. Great seasoned meats. Seven days a week, they got the deli in there. You can get everything from good, hearty rice and gravies to a little green salad, salad with meat. Fresh produce, great wine selection. Uh, Blake's uh, beer section is second to none. I talked with him this past Blake week. Blake helped as me well. while I was shopping. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got you know just a huge selection, at least 80 plus international beers, and some imported all the way from Arneville off Highway 31. <laughs> so you can get right. all you want. Next, I've got, well, at, oh, don't forget, Little Benny's Sports Shack there to get your nutritional supplemental needs and Miss Mary's Gift Shop as well. And one more sponsor, Carl's Thrifty Way. If you need medicinal type things, if you're going to get your prescription done, if you're going to get stuff over the counter, maybe uh, some, some gifts, maybe you need some things uh, wrapped or monogrammed, they do all that as well at Carl's Thrifty Way here on South Union in Opelousas. They even do some home decorating type things. So if you want to do something kind of fancier to do a decoration in your house, little pieces of furniture and vases and all that type of thing. They'll even go by your house and give you some ideas at Carl's Thrifty Way. Chris Fazer came by while we were on the break mm -hmm. and uh, had a nice little visit. Who was, I guess, I don't know if you call him the Secretary of the Louisiana Insurance Commission. Is that the title? Uh, he, he was, I guess, director? like assistant to uh, Mr. H.P. Walker. Okay. Was the, was the head man. Okay. And Chris was right under him. Right. And uh, about, I met him formally at, on the job when I got appointed in 1972 to the Insurance Rating Commission. And shortly after that, he uh, started calling me Kingfish. And of course, he left a little note here in case he didn't get to see me. And it's, it's titled to Kingfish. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about politics, we, we talked about uh, the death of uh, Senator Sammy Nunes. Well, this is some good news of a person that's alive and well. And I'm speaking of uh, former Senator uh, Mike Michaud from right here in uh, Lafayette, Acadiana area. Right. And of course, he comes from a family of political politicians. Uh, he has a and, brother that's a district judge. And, and, and musicians. And, and musicians. And his father, of course, uh, was what, Lieutenant Governor of the state of Louisiana or Department of Education? Might the have education. been education. I education. think it was Mr. Lewis uh, Michaud. Well, S Senator Mike Michaud is no longer uh, in the polit political end of it. Now he's working uh, and part of the Picard Group. And the Picard Group was uh, founded by Tyron Picard from the Erath area. His daddy was uh, Cecil Picard, former state senator. And uh, Tyron, of course, for many years was uh, part of the LHC, uh, no, the Acadian Ambulance, I'm sorry, the Acadian Ambulance, the other large uh, company that grew out of uh, the Lafayette area by way of one of them by Palmetto, I might add. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be called down on that. But uh, they ought to make a real formidable group, and we wish uh, Mike uh, nothing but success. And, of course, uh, Tyron's uh, wife uh, hails from uh, Opelousas, um, James Guglielmo's uh, 
daughter. How about well, that? Mike, also, one of the things I know Mike with is, uh, you know, the New Life Center here in town where the Ladies Homeless Shelter is here. And, of course, you've got St. Joseph's Cafe in Lafayette where they, they feed people looking for meals, uh, especially the homeless. He's one of the guys on that board that helps generate all the money. I don't know if you saw in the paper this past mm -hmm. week, they generated $400,000 this year to help these different homeless type charity uh, things. So, about, Mike, thanks a whole bunch. How about the article I read? I have it in here someplace. I'll let you talk a little mm -hmm. while and I'll find it. Uh, the little church over here, it is right here, mm -hmm. uh, over in uh, Port, Port Barry. Barry. Sure. Uh, did uh, your. St. Mary's Catholic Church. Yeah. Right? Uh, did Thomas Stanford, didn't he donate? That would be what your grandfather, My right? My grandfather. Donated the land there. He, he bought a big track of land from the little bayou behind the church all the way in the back to where the farm is. I think he had the idea that one day he was going to either build a house on that side of the road or one of the kids maybe was going to build, he built, there. He did build a house. Well, he built on, on the opposite God's, side of the road. God's home, well, house. Right. He said one day the bishop came by and the bishop says, I could use that property for a church. And in those days, a lot, when churches were growing, a lot of black communities wanted their own church. They wanted to better have say in all the different things. So they, the bishop came to uh, my grandfather and he donated the property to help. So I'm going to look into uh, making a contribution towards, uh, they're not, they've they, they completed in, the job, but they got some credit. Uh, they have some debts uh, right. uh, uh, it's, outstanding. It's all stained glass windows that they've added to, to the, old, uh, the old church. There. Make sure that I call them after we do the program. We will do it. And I'll see if I can make a donation. And uh, there was a very, every Monday, uh, I, I bring this up uh, periodically, mm -hmm. there's a, a back page on one of the sections of the uh, Morning Advocate. And it's always very, very interesting. This particular uh, Monday was Louisiana Jim Bowie mm -hmm. and uh, James Jim Bowie lived most of his life in and around Opelousas, Louisiana mm -hmm. and of course the uh, famous uh, Bowie, Jim Bowie Oak uh, near the Palace Cafe is partly owned by Bobby Dupre. Mm -hmm. you, you own one, one half the tree. Yeah, a little you, bit over a half, but we'll call own, it a half. You used to own the other half. The other half and I sold the other half to Tina and Bill Walker Tina uh, Dukas Walker but, of the but Palace Cafe. But you never owned both houses at the same at time. At the same time, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to buy that back. I tried to buy it back, but they wanted too much money. They wanted to make money on that after I had done them a favor. But that's another story. But it's very interesting. He ha he led a very interesting mm -hmm. life. I mean, very, very. And of course, everybody knows the story of him dying at, at, at the Alamo. That was the end of his life. But he, he was a very successful businessman. And his, uh, he was, his father's name was Red. Mm -hmm. Bowie. And his and brother was named Resin. Yeah, and, and the, the father is, is buried uh, over in Natchez in, mm -hmm. in a cemetery, in, I'm sorry, uh, Port Gibson, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Port Gibson, Mississippi, which is just north of Natchez. Uh, I have a picture uh, when we visiting that cemetery with uh, Jack Higginaga, who is deceased recently, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Barry Mitchell. Mm -hmm. The three of us are made well, there, a tour of that. There are baptismal that. and marriage records related to the whole Bowie family at St. Leonard Catholic Church here and in And then, town. of course, September 19, 1827, near Natchez, uh, the famous uh, sandball fight, which mm -hmm. established his reputation With the Bowie knife. as a formidable knife fighter. Mm -hmm. Very interesting story. You can look it up uh, on your computer, there right? There you go. That's right. That'll that be correct. on your computer. He was born uh, April 10, 1796, uh -huh. and he lived till March 6, 1836. 1836. Very young Not man. Not the Alamo. Yep. Yep. Very, very interesting story. How about Opelousas Little Theaters doing and their... And I own part of the history. That's right. Doing their showcase event the, where all these different acts, all local people are going to do singing, dancing, acting, you name it. All kind of different things going on. The show's going to run the 19th, 20th, and 21st at 7 p.m. That's uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The following Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is the 26th, 27th, and 28th at 7 p.m. Matinees on the two Sundays, the 22nd and 29th of January at 2 p.m. Call 351-3822 and talk to Duncan McBride. I think the tickets, I don't think I got the ticket price on here. They ain't high. I would say $10 at the most. And we got a nice email 
about Ross Aber. A lot of you keep asking me, right. what have you heard about Ross lately? And, and his, I don't know if you want to call a cousin or an aunt. I don't know how it goes. I guess his mama's cousin. Co yeah, so that's cousin, cousin for him, too. Cousin. Uh, Miss Stephanie Johnson sent us a nice email that Ross is at Toro Infirmary in New Orleans, the big old hospital in the middle of New Orleans. That, it, that, he, he was sent there because they have specialists in the field of treatment that and therapy that he needs. Therapy and rehab type to bring back when you've had a traumatic uh, head injury. So uh, she said she'd visit with him last Sunday. He's shown improvement every day. When he wanted certain things, he would write it down. So it's all coming back. It's just going to be a long, long process. So your prayers and thoughts are definitely needed. Keep also uh, Keisha and of course the Ethan and of course there's a baby on, on the way who they're going to name Bennett who's expected here in May. So if you want to help out, $10 to get one of the, the Stay Strong Ross bracelets over at Ken's Thrifty Way here in Opelousas and Liz Durio's Curios right here on South, uh, was it Highway 182? You can help out. We need a picture. We, 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 yeah. we missed the picture back at Christmas time. Oh, yeah. uh, shortly after Christmas, uh, Jonas uh, Reeson, uh -huh. uh, the young son of uh, Andre uh, Dupre, uh, my niece. Try that one, Mark. Uh, that's a picture of uh, Jonas uh -huh. and, and, of course, the wife, Sarah, uh -huh. and uh, Soren and Simon, the two children. And uh, I just, I can't say enough about that little family. They live uh, up in Maryland, I think it is. And uh, she is, uh, she's in uh, special, she specialized, she's a doctor. Mm -hmm. She's getting into a specialty and I understand she's a bright young lady and they're trying to keep them up there so that she can become part of the hospital staff there, mm -hmm. teaching. And uh, of course- Around uh, Johns Hopkins, I guess. That's right. And John has graduated from uh, Tulane in architecture mm -hmm. and uh, he's uh, got a real nice job up there and just a, a little gentleman and a little beautiful little family and I'm sorry that uh, kind of late and get in and out to you. But yes. uh, Brother John Dupre's grandson, grandson and great grandkids. And, and John is uh, over at uh, Stone, Stoneway, Stone, I, I have it. Uh, I'll get it it'll, it'll after you, you. I'll, it'll come to me. He, he's in a nursing home, he's doing well. Uh, if uh, you're interested in visiting him, he's in uh, room 49 and uh, would welcome your visit. And I'll get that name while you get to the next subject. How about All right. that? How about if I go with this photo? Show this one. We got Jesse the Giant Killer Fletcher and Jay Soldier Ant Gauthier. They, they're going to the National Silver Gloves Championship in Kansas City, Missouri. It's going to be on February 1st through the 4th. And they won their, their weight divisions over here. Uh, Fletcher is an 11-year-old sixth grader at LG Alamo Middle School. And he's going to box in the 90-pound uh, group. And... Uh, Little Ant Gautier there, uh, uh, Little Ant, Soldier Ant Gautier, Jay, uh, he's 13, he's an 8th grader at St. Ignatius, and he's going to box in the 80-pound uh, weight class. So if you want to get more information, go to RagingCajunBoxing.com. Okay, Brother John Dupre uh -huh. is at Cornerstone Village. That makes more sense. Uh, 103 uh, West Marshall, M-A-R-T-I-A-L, Marshall. Mm -hmm. It's not M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L. -L, right. like, like Marshall Law. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Avenue in Lafayette. And uh, I know he'd love to see his friends and uh, visit with you all. How about this photo? We went to Bo's garage over here in downtown Opelous, as you and I this past week, and Bo had a scooter he auctioned off late last year uh, to give the proceeds to the Opelous area cerebral palsy. But clinic. let's give the credit to the person who donated uh, the scooter, uh -huh. and that's uh, uh, Owen Shute. Owen Shute. Owen Shute. He sells for physicians. Uh, life insurance company. He sells health insurance uh, and life insurance and does a good job for him, I might add. And we got our whole crew there. The whole crew. We got Kelly Cormier. We have Bo. Bo's in again. We have Miss Lynn Morrow, the executive director of the Cerebral Palsy, mm -hmm. and Miss uh, Lynn Quirk mm -hmm. and uh, Bobby Dupre taking the money. Taking received, the money. Taking that the money. And we certainly appreciate it. The, the money's been in a in a corner there being uh, wait we were waiting for they'd it put it together and they'd put it aside to give to us and the holidays then, came then, and then it's like then, wait a minute <laughs> yeah and then uh, uh 
Wayne Doucette and his wife Ginger took over the management for right. about six or eight months. And uh, so they just kept it money where it right. was. It, I guess it was titled uh, Cerebral Palsy. Right. Nobody took it. And uh, by the way, uh, Bo has reopened. It was closed for maybe a week. To do but, clean up. And yeah, and the, the reorganization. Right now, they're going to open at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, Thursday. Friday and Saturday, mm -hmm. and I understand from the conversation that he gave us, he will do the steak night on Thursday nights. Excellent. And uh, John 